Turbidity measurements allow us to assess the amount of light that passes through the water. It is a function of both the suspended particles in the water and the color of the water. These particles of soil, algae, or other materials may be very small or large enough to be seen with the naked eye. Water with high turbidity isn't very appealing to us, but what about the organisms that live in the water? Do you think life for them is better in this or this? Now here's Chris Stepanuk, Volunteer Stream Monitoring Coordinator, to tell you more about water turbidity. Sources of turbidity include soil erosion from construction sites, stream banks, and farm fields, from urban runoff, from excessive algal growth in the stream, and also from bottom sediments being stirred up by bottom feeders such as carp. Turbidity can affect such things as photosynthesis in a stream because the more sediment there is in a stream, it blocks the sun's rays from reaching the plants and they can't photosynthesize. It also affects the temperature of the water because the more cloudy the water is, the sun can heat up each individual particle of sediment in the water and therefore heat up the water. Turbidity also affects sight feeding fish that need to see the food they want to catch and may fill in spawning beds with sediment. To monitor turbidity, you're going to need several bits of equipment. You're going to need your hip boots, you're going to need your data sheet and your pen, you're going to need a bucket for scooping water and something to stir that water up with, and of course you're going to need your turbidity tube. There's two different kinds of turbidity tubes that you might have. One has a release valve like this on the bottom, and the other does not have that release valve. The turbidity tubes, regardless of the kind that you have, are made the same way. And what they have in the bottom is a secchi disc, or a black and white disc, in the bottom of the tube that you'll put into this tube. And along the side of the tube, there's a measuring tape, which you'll read the height of the water column. After you pour the water into the tube, you're going to try to look down in and see how much water you need to put into the tube until you can just barely see that black and white disc in the bottom. So we'll get our equipment together and go monitor turbidity. When collecting your turbidity sample, you want to make sure to approach your site from downstream so that you don't cause any excess of turbidity in your monitoring site. I'm going to show you two different ways to collect your water sample, first just with the turbidity tube. In this method, what you'll do is you'll take the tube and plunge it into the water to let the entire tube fill up. Sometimes it helps to splash a little water into the top to get that all the way filled. Then what you're going to do is turn yourself away from the sun and look directly down through the water column to try to see that secchi disc in the bottom of the tube. If you can see it when the water is filled to the top of the tube, you're going to record that entire length of the tube on your recording form. But if you can't, you're either going to use the release valve to slowly release water and look down into the tube until you can just barely see that disc, or you can pour off water a little bit at a time from the top until you can just barely see that secchi disc in the bottom, and then record that height of water on your recording form. You're going to do this two times. The second way to collect a water sample for turbidity is to use a bucket. This method is preferable if you can't enter the stream due to deep water depths or if there's recently been a storm event and it's unsafe to enter the stream. If you collected your sample in a bucket, the first thing you want to do when you get back on shore is to use a, some kind of stirring stick to make sure all the sediments are still suspended in the water. And then what you want to do is to take the bucket and fill up your turbidity tube. Then you do the same thing that we demonstrated before, making sure you shade your tube, looking down through the water column, and seeing when you can just barely see that secchi disc in the bottom. You're going to do this two times, each time making sure to stir up that water sample to make sure that the sediments are still suspended in the sample. So in the end, you'll have two turbidity measurements written on your data sheet. What you need to do is take the average of the two, add them together and divide by two, and then the next step is to get a conversion to NTUs, a unit that's understood by people who monitor turbidity professionally. There's a conversion form on the back of your data sheet to do this, so you'll convert your centimeters or inches into NTUs. To summarize turbidity monitoring, what you're going to do is collect your water sample, record the data on the data sheet, repeat steps one and two, and then make that conversion on the back of the data sheet. Water turbidity is a quick and easy measurement to take on your stream. 
Try measuring during or immediately after a rain event or snow melt. Since these are the times you are most likely to see an increase in turbidity due to the soils and other particles entering the stream. But remember, safety first. Never enter a stream if water levels are dangerously high. If you would like to know more about turbidity, view the Stream Ecology section of this DVD series.